Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and it's my pleasure to walk you through the Photoshop CS5 patch tool and more importantly how I use it in some of my portrait retouching. I use it all the time and I've learned some kind of little tips and techniques to help you use it better. So let's take a look. I have some images open and we're just going to dive right in and show you some of the things I use the patch tool on all the time. Okay, this first image uh, we have open and we can see, uh, and this is something everybody has, just these visible necklines here. And while everyone has them, that doesn't mean I like to see them in my portraits. So I have the patch tool selected here on the tool panel. And by default, the patch tool will patch the source. That means it will patch the area that you select, not the area that you're dragging it to. So when I make a selection with the patch tool, just like I would with the lasso, and by the way, I am using a Wacom tablet. Uh, it's, it's, I wouldn't retouch a photo without one. Uh, let's go ahead and just drag it now to an area that does not have the line. And what it will do is patch that area that had the line. So here, we'll try it one more time. And I find that working with smaller patches is usually easier than trying to do it in one fatal swoop. Now, in that case, it patched kind of the same spot twice, but we can just go ahead and drag those away. So again, we just keep working with the patch tool, selecting areas and dragging them to areas that kind of match skin tone as well, so that we don't have some weird distortions on the skin. And you know, you just, you'll get quick with it as I'm doing here. I'm just going ahead and making my selections and dragging. And eventually you will have no necklines or fewer necklines. And by the way, when it comes to portrait retouching, it's all to your taste. In other words, if you think the person should have necklines, then by all means, leave the necklines there. If you think they should have half the number that they had, then leave half. If you think they should have none, then take them all away. So it's up to you. It's your portrait. You do it the way you think should work best. I'm just showing you the tools here. All right, so I pretty much have patched away the area. And again, to show you the before, that was with the lines and the after, that's without. Now there's some smoothing I'd probably do here and we've already learned how to do smoothing in the past. Or I might just continue to work with the patch tool to kind of smooth that out. But at some point you're gonna reach a point of diminishing returns and it's just not gonna be worth the effort to patch. Now the patch doesn't work on everything and sometimes you'll, you'll drag it to an area and it does some funky distortion and you'll just undo it, maybe try it a different spot or try dragging to a different spot and do it again. But it's not for everything. It doesn't work perfectly on every area, but I do use it quite a bit for things like this that I just want to get out of the photo quickly. And that's the, the thing about the patch tool is that it can let you work with large areas all at once. Okay, and again, smaller areas, by the way, are usually more accurate or better uh, than trying to work with large areas. Okay, so that was one. Let's jump over to the next photo. Uh, this one, same thing. We, got, we have a mole there. And by the way, when it comes to moles, it's usually best to ask the person, hey, do you like your mole? Are you partial to your mole or not? Uh, but you can remove it just as easily with the patch tool as you would with the clone stamp or with the healing brushes. And same thing here on the neckline. We'll just go ahead now again, choice, drag it up or drag it down. I just, I'll have to do it to see which one I like better. I'm okay with that. Maybe move that one over there and patching away. Now we did necklines already. So you kind of get the hang of this. This is really not that hard. What I really brought this photo up for was to show you this area. I didn't notice it when I took the photo, and it always bugs me when I don't notice things like this when I take the photo, because it would be much easier to walk over to the person and say, hey, your, your uh, clasp on your necklace is showing. Have them turn it and then take the photo. Then you don't have to worry about fixing it in Photoshop later. But in this case, I did miss it in the photography, so now I do have to fix it in post. And this is, an, again, one of those examples where I could try and clone it out, and yeah, I could probably do it, but I always try the patch tool first because sometimes I'm just amazed at how well it gets the job done without having to do a whole bunch of cloning. I'm gonna have to clone it to fix it, but uh, if the patch tool gets me 90% of the way there, I'm happy. So we're just gonna select the area of the clasp. There we go. And now the thing about the patch tool is when you drag it, you get a preview 
of what it's going to look like when you let go. So if I let go now, it's just going to break the chain. But if I kind of line it up to where the other chain is and I let go, not bad. And again, a little bit of color uh, difference there. I might, you know, clone that little piece over to that piece or even try and patch that one more time to see if I like it better. But you kind of get the idea. The patch tool is kind of cool, especially when you use the preview and line it up. Now, if you zoom out on that photo, you'd never know that, that class was there except for that one little notch. And again, we can just keep patching till we get rid of that. So that's a using the patch tool to fix something I should have done in the photo or photography itself. All right, let's go over to another one. We have one here where she's wearing this uh, armband and it's red. It's okay. I, it's all right. But let's say I wanted to remove it. Um, I, I like the silver one, but I don't like the red one. Now, the red one kind of goes all up into this area here, and we'll get rid of that in a minute. But again, it's easier to work in sections than it is to try and do the whole thing sometimes. So I just want to get rid of this large part here first. So again, we'll make our selection. We'll go around, and we'll come around here, and we're going to lose that little spot or mole there. And same thing, we can drag it, and we can line it up. So we drag it away from the uh, bracelet there until we get skin and we let go. And it, it did a little bit of funkiness here, but we can just easily fix that with the same tool. And now we can deal with the area up here. So same thing, make our selection. And I'm just, I am purposely grabbing some of the arm because it will help me line it up. Just drag it up there and great. Okay, one more thing here. Let's go ahead and drag that down into that area and voila, no more bracelet. Now, of course, you're going to zoom in and make sure you got all the little pieces that are gone, but I gave you the basics to get rid of, you know, the bulk of it. Now, there's one more area where you'll be tempted to use the patch tool, and this is under the eyes. And sometimes it works great. And sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the eyes and what you're trying to do. Now, removing lines under the eyes, again, this is something almost all of us have, uh, especially the older we get, the more lines and crow's feet and things we get under our eyes. However, although I'd be tempted to just take it completely away, that also looks kind of unnatural, especially on an older, you know, over, let's say, 30 person. Uh, because we know that naturally a person that gets older is going to have something under their eyes. So we'll be tempted to take it all away, but don't. All right, so for example, what I like to do is in, in most cases, especially where there are two uh, distinct lines here, is maybe get rid of one of them, kind of reduce it so it doesn't look as bad. So in this case, we're going to make our selection on the lower line here. And this is going to be one of those cases where the patch tool will do okay, but not great. Uh, and I'll show you why in a minute. So basically, now what's my choice? Where do I drag this to? I can only drag it down. I can't drag it up. And if I drag it down too far, like over into this area, then the skin pattern won't match. So I can only go kind of like straight down. And when I go straight down, again, it does okay. And I could continue patching the little areas where it didn't quite get it the way I want. But what it kind of leaves is this kind of like we used to call it a pancake pattern, where it's kind of like this dark patch where the line used to be. And again, we'll take care of that in a second. I just wanted to point out that I'm not totally happy with what that did. And that's one of the downfalls of using the patch tool to get rid of the lines like this. But let's go ahead and get rid of the other one first. And same thing, we'll just kind of, eh, she's got like three over here. So I think I'll get rid of the bottom two. And we'll just go ahead and drag that down. And again, it's just not great. It's better but not great, it's okay. All right, so now, what do we do when we get it kind of okay, but we want it to look more natural? We don't want the dark patches either, we just kind of want it to be no lines, or less lines. So here's, a, here's how I would clean this up, and it maybe even in some cases do this instead of the patch tool, it just depends on the person. So I go over to my clone stamp tool, and your clone stamp tool has a mode and an opacity. So your mode is normally on normal. So I'm going to go up to the mode here, and I'm going to switch it from normal to lighten. 
What that tells the patch tool to do is only affect the areas that are darker than the area you're sampling. As far as opacity, normally it's at 100%. I'm going to drop the opacity down to around 40-ish. Now 40 is fine. Okay, so we got it on 40. We'll go ahead and zoom back out here. And now what I'm going to do is sample the area underneath the eye. And because I'm only painting it or cloning at 40%, it won't be as drastic. So I can go down to some of the lighter area here. So we're just going to go ahead and hold down our Option or Alt key and Sample. Click. And now when we come up here, we're kind of like lightening this area without it looking so drastically light. So it kind of blends it in a lot better. So same thing here. We're just telling it to lighten. You know, 40%. Make it look a little bit more natural. Same thing here. Now this is going to look a little bit more drastic, but it's okay. We'll blend it in. And just kind of clean this up over here. Clean this area up over here. Kind of smooth that out a little bit. So we have lines, because again, it'd be kind of unnatural not to have any line. Uh, but we don't have to have two lines or three lines under the eyes. Now, every time you lift up the brush <clears throat> and put it back down, you are lightening it again another 40%. So, you know, now it's at 80% versus the original 40. So you got to keep that in mind as well. It might be better if you if you think it, if you made a mistake to undo and start again as opposed to continuing to apply the uh, clone. So again, this is the before and the after. Again, just making her look like she got a little bit more sleep or a little bit younger without taking the lines completely away. So I hope that helps you. Uh, the patch tool is a wonderful tool. We use the right way. You can get a lot done with it quickly in your portrait retouching and again spend a little time working with it more accurately and you can get some great results that's it for this episode of the adobe creative suite podcast my name is terry white thanks for watching